In today's video, we are going to talk about the noise abutment departure procedure number one, number two, and the ICAO noise abutment departure procedure A and B, Alpha and Bravo. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. V1, rotate. The noise abutment departure procedures are procedures that you need to follow during your initial climb and after your takeoff in order to make sure that you respect and follow the noise restriction at that specific airport. Why is that? Some airports are in the middle of nowhere, so you don't have any noise restrictions there. There is nothing, no houses, no city, no towns, nothing. But there are some other big airports, such as Madrid, that is built very close to the city. You need to follow a very specific and restricted noise abutment departure procedure in order to make sure that you don't make, you don't produce too much noise and disturb the town, the house and the city that is very close to the airport. Some airports, such as Madrid, they don't only monitor your vertical profile about the noise button departure procedures, but they also monitor your lateral profile. So you need not only to reduce takeoff thrust at a specific altitude, but also you need to follow very strictly your standard instrumental departure. Let's see in practical what they are. Okay, so in order to make sure that you comply with the restriction of that specific airport, you need to study the AOI section of that specific airport. In that AOI of the airport, you're going to find the information regarding the noise abutment. So you need to go and check the noise abutment part of the departure sections, and in there it's going to tell you which noise abutment departure procedure you should follow. Every takeoff on a jet planes, they have a noise abutment departure procedure, either the noise abutment departure procedure 2, noise abutment departure procedure 1, A or B. One of these four procedures are always followed, so we don't just take off like that and we do what we want. We have this specific procedure that will tell us when to reduce the thrust from the takeoff thrust that you used in order to perform the takeoff to the climb thrust. So when you reduce the takeoff from the takeoff thrust to the climb thrust, the noise of the engines will be lower. And once you reach a certain altitude, and we will see in a second what is this certain altitude, you can pitch down, accelerate, and retract the flaps. Depending on the noise abutment departure procedure, the height above the aerodrome level at which you should reduce the thrust from the takeoff power to the climb power, and the height above the aerodrome level at which you should pitch down and accelerate, vary depending on a noise abutment departure procedure. And that's why it is very important to check the AOI section of your airport when you fly somewhere that you don't know, in order to make sure that you comply with these restrictions. First of all, we have the noise abutment departure procedure number two. Let's say you are flying, you are taking off off of an airport, that there are no towns around, city around, you don't have any restriction regarding the noise. In this case, you can use the noise abutment departure procedure number two or ICAO Bravo. What does it mean? It means that after the takeoff, you can reduce the thrust from the takeoff thrust to the climb thrust at 1,000 feet above aerodrome level. And at 1,000 feet above aerodrome level, you can pitch down and start the acceleration in order to retract the flaps. This has multiple advantages because the earlier you accelerate, the faster you fly, the earlier you reach your destination. But not only this, the earlier you accelerate, the the sooner you retract the flaps and the less drag you're gonna produce. Thus, it's gonna be even more efficient. So you're gonna have time efficiency in your side if you use the noise abutment procedure number two or the AKO. Bravo. Now, in some airports, and you find again this information in the AOI section of the airport, you might find that you need to follow the noise abutment departure procedure number one or AKO alpha. What is this? The noise abutment departure procedure number one and AKO alpha, so they have the same acceleration height. So that means that at 3,000 feet, you can accelerate. The areas at which you can pitch down and accelerate for the flap retraction is 3,000 feet. And also there is a difference between noise abutment procedure number one and IKO alpha is the thrust reduction height. So on the noise abutment procedure number one, you reduce the thrust from the takeoff thrust to the climb thrust at 1,000 feet. 
and then on the AK of alpha, you do this reduction of the thrust at 1,500 feet. So as you can see, before takeoff, you need to make sure that you know which is the acceleration height or which is the uh, noise button pressure procedure you have to follow, and then change your takeoff profile in order to meet these requirements. Okay. So in order to recap, the noise button procedure number two or AK of Bravo are the same, means that you the thrust reduction and acceleration height are the same at 1000, so you do only one thing at, this, at 1000 feet. So you retract the thrust, you pitch down, you accelerate it, you retract the flaps at 1000 feet. On the noise abutment departure procedure number one, you reduce the thrust from takeoff thrust to climb thrust at 1000 feet. However, you keep climbing with that thrust until 3000, then at 3000, you pitch down and you retract the flaps. On the ICAO Alpha procedures, you keep the takeoff thrust until 1500 feet, and then at 1500 feet, you reduce the thrust from the takeoff thrust to the climb thrust. You can climb up to 3000 feet above aerodrome level with that thrust, and at 3000 feet, you retract the flaps on schedule. So, as you can see, guys, these two procedures are like we have to think about these two procedures like a two big families. The first one is gonna make sure that we're gonna produce less noise on the long distance because once we retract the flap, since we're gonna retract the flap earlier, we're gonna have a better climb gradient. But at the beginning, we're gonna pitch down at low altitude, thus, we're gonna produce a lot of noise at the first, uh, at the initial part of the climb, but then later, we're gonna produce less noise. On the second family, which is the noise abutment departure procedure number one, or echo alpha, we're gonna prioritize the noise. So we're gonna produce less noise in the initial part of the takeoff. So guys, as you can see, it is very important that you understand what are these noise abutment departure procedures, why we have them in place, and which you should fly every day depending on the airport. One thing that is very important to understand is that the safety has the priority of the noise abutment departure procedure. So if due to performance, let's say during takeoff, you have an engine failure, you don't comply anymore with the noise abutment departure procedure, but you follow the maneuver and the procedure of the engine failure. So the noise abutment departure procedures are the good procedures to follow when there is a normal situation, when everything is going good and everything is great. However, if there is a non-normal situation and the safety needs to be prioritized, in that case, the noise abutment departure procedure they are not very important. Okay, guys, so I hope you understand better what is the noise abutment departure procedure, and I hope this will help you out throughout your interview, your power job interview. If you have any questions, leave a comment below, and then I will help you out. I wish you a great day, and I'll see you on the next one. Check, we can set to 7-0, please.